Hello everybody, it is me, and Burpus Katuzi, and today we're here talking about the Rising of the Shield here, episode 13. Oh man, lots of stuff to talk about. I've only watched the first eight minutes of this episode, and dude, when they were, sh like, at the beginning of this episode, when they were, like, all attacking him and stuff like that, and they, they were, like, joking around saying, like, Ikai and stuff like that, and they're just, like, saying they're, like, faking running away and stuff like that, they're faking it here, there's, like, when you saw that one guy overreacting, like, he's, like, like holding on to his, like, neck and stuff like that, but then you saw later on that they can manipulate footage, like, in the manga, they didn't show any of this, like, it was just, like, it was just, they took her and then they just assumed that, that she got kidnapped. Like, but, but, and I don't know if, maybe it was, maybe they mentioned, mentioned this, mentioned the thing with the glass ball, maybe in the light novel and web novel, but in the manga, they didn't show anything like this. Like, dude, they, all of the, the all of the, like, the wizards that, like, summoned the heroes manipulated the footage of Nafumi protecting Melty and then showed them with sadistic faces. Like, they were able to change facial expressions. That's high tech. Like, I have never seen anything like this in a series before. Manipulating the footage in, like, sort of medieval fantasy times. That's just crazy insane. Like, this, 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 uh, something that I mentioned last episode is just, like, man, I friggin' hate... I just, I hate Melty Sun because she's, like... It's, it's mostly because she's, like, ignorant... I guess, I guess, because, like, she, like, wants Nafumi to talk to the king, but then if he talks to the king, the king just wants Nafumi to be, a, like, a little slave, like, bitch boy. Like, he just wants him to, like, like answer to all of his commands. There's no answers. Like, no way. Like, no way. Like, Melty just doesn't understand because, like, if he went to the king, the king just would just want him to just listen to every single one of his commands. No need to ask. Just tell him all the information to blah, 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 blah. And then, like, that's, like, a no-go. She even, like, 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 the Fubi, like, says, says, says that he decided where to go and then asks Melty what she wants to do. And then Melty says that she'll go to the king by herself. And then the Fubi's just like, that's a death wish. Like, a, like. Like, like, she even said this in the manga, and I'm, like, I'm just like, that is a death wish. Like, what are you even thinking? Like, she has, like, I think she has powers, right? I think she has, like, magic powers. Like, like, she, even though, that, like, she's probably not powerful enough to face off against, like, a whole army. Like, I stopped the, I stopped the episode at, like, eight minutes. There's a whole entire battalion that, that, that that's being uh, thrown out of a kingdom right now. They, they were also able to show the footage as a, like a TV screen to every single like village and nation that's around their kingdom and stuff like that. That's just crazy how they're just like framing them and then like at least at least they at least they weren't like going around and they like noticed that they were being framed and people would look at them instead they they were sneaking around and seeing what what places were like and they were able to see it. They even like they even like sketched up their faces and put them on like wanted signs, but this time they're being normal faces. They made them sadistic faces so Reptalia and uh, Philo look really weird and nasty but then Nafumi's face just looks exactly the same which I guess is funny because that's his regular face <laughs> and then uh, we also had a new opening <laughs> man that opening was really good like there was parts of it that had a really good animation I don't know if that if those like shots are gonna be like in the actual like in like in the future like if those shots are gonna be in like future episodes like like even like that uh <laughs> Like it was in the opening song, so so it isn't a spoiler. This the the scythe guy, is he even gonna be here by by the end of the season? Like that guy is it like uh, he might be there in the last few episodes maybe if like if like uh like when you saw the part with like the with like Nafumi like shielding like a giant blast coming at his head like unless that stuff that giant blast stuff happens in episode nineteen or twenty then we could get to the scythe guy by episode 24 but but that, that like that was like that was like really good that was like episodes where like naruto looked really good like that's the type of animation that we saw right there during the opening song and we also saw another character that i really like which is the the girl with the two uh hair strips flying upwards i'm like she, her her like personality like the girl i'm talking about right now i have it on the screen if, if you're looking at the screen like that girl she is exactly like melty sun with her thinking that she just doesn't understand how things work like unless like like nafumi could listen to melty and her but then nafumi would just get killed because because he would have to lower his guard down and he'll just die and then oh no the shield hero's dead oh god it's all melty then that girl's fault because that's probably what it's gonna be like <laughs> There was also like the knight. They tried to interrogate one of the knights that att that that was attacking Melty and them. And then like, man, those knights, the knights under the kingdom were just trash. They're like pieces of shit. They're not even human. They're just garbage. Like the way that like 
it's like, man, they just hate the shield hero no matter what. You can tell that they're like, they're like uh, people that like probably are like very faithful to the church that they don't question anything. It's good to question things, man. That was just really sucky what happened right there. We also saw how Melty like like really trusts the king, like dude, like like he is he is he is in on it. I'm pretty sure. Like, he would have to be, like, especially with how, with his sadistic smiles that he showed multiple times, like, when Nafumi got, when Nafumi was there, like, like, uh, messing with him last episode. So I'm wondering where that's gonna go. But, uh, yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes to read the rest of this. It's, it's always the bitch. It's always the bitch. Uh, mine son. Mine son, mine son, mine son. Mine son. Why? Why do you have to be like this? Why do you have to be such an entitled bitch? Every single time that she's on the screen, every single time she's in the bog, every single time you just have to listen to her, just everything just goes wrong. Like, man, like, all the other, like, like, now Fumi's IQ must be through the roof for him to, like, be his own person, but then, like, all the other heroes are just, like, worthless, or just, like, have, like, zero mind. They just, like, can't, like, think anything. They always have to listen to other people. They can't just do things on their own. Even though they do do things on their own, but they still have to listen to the king and stuff like that. Now, Fumi decided to go to Sylvette, and uh, and then apparently all of the Kingdom Knights, I was wondering, like, what, what, like, what that huge battalion was going to, and apparently they're going to all of the checkpoints, so that way Nafumi can't leave the country to go to Sylvette, which I guess is, I guess is a good idea, but... I, I guess, like, although I guess the four of them couldn't do that, because you saw how, in the opening, you saw how Mel Melty was also with, uh, with, with Nafumi, like, like, battling, like, like, as a team, which is, I guess, fun, and uh, I guess they are, I guess they are probably gonna be a team for a long time, since they, since he is protecting her. They were going on a journey without the carriage, they were just walking on foot, going over mountains, like, <laughs> that is a good place to go to, because people don't usually, like, like, even in the real world, people don't usually walk over mountains, they usually drive a car through the mountains through safety points, but if somebody, if a criminal were to just go up a mountain, down a mountain, up a mountain, down a mountain, or just, like, go through the sides, no one would ever find the person, like, they could get anywhere by just going through unconventional routes they, they, they're able to find them pretty easily like they're like hiding in a hut where 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 melty was saying how she like for she like really likes the king for some reason i guess that's because he's i guess it's because he's her father so maybe she has like unconditional like love for him or something like that nafumi like they it was off screen i guess we didn't need to hear it again but nafumi told her about what happened to him with, I guess with my son and stuff like that, and, tell, and told her what the king did to him, and then she's just like, unbelievable. Maybe if you just talk to him, <laughs> well, may, well, maybe he, maybe, maybe that would work. But at the same time, if my son was there, it probably wouldn't work. And we saw how like, th like the knights were able to find him in that hut, like in that hut where he was hiding. At, they were able to find him, like they were getting close to him. They were like trying to find him, and then they ended up finding him because they were like walking on the ledge of, of a cliff, like not like the ledge of it, but under it. There was like a little like walkway that they could go on, and then <laughs> Malty son ended up falling and then Nafumi had to save her. She ended up losing her like bag or maybe Nafumi lost his bag. And then and then they ended up finding them and they ended up having them cornered. Like they had they were like they were thinking about jumping off jumping off of like a cliff area. Then they looked down and there's nothing there. So then they had to turn around, they had to talk about it. So then they are they're telling uh, all the heroes were also there and they were telling Nafumi to t the hand over the second princess for Melty Sun, but of course Melty Sun ends up for for herself and then says it says that she's like she's like here on her own free will. And then after that we we see Mine Sun come in and then she just says that Nafumi has brainwashing powers and everyone must trust the three heroes church because apparently they're able to figure it out like how like how could you know something that he doesn't know like like if they are able to know things that that you wouldn't know wouldn't all the heroes be able to do unbelievable like techniques and strategies if they knew what all the heroes techniques and powers were like that would just be insane if like if they had that type of potential but of course the other heroes just believe believe mine son right away that the church found out that nofumi has a brainwashing shield and brainwashed melty and then after that, uh, and that Ren, Ren said that that uh, that they could keep Melty Sun safe instead of Nafumi, and then said that Nafumi could just walk away. And then Nafumi's like, "That's not a bad deal." But then, <laughs> but then Mel Melty finally has some common sense and grabs onto Nafumi's cape and says, "I can't trust these guys. I finally understand what you're saying. I'm gonna get killed if I if, I, if I'm not with you." So that's where I'm at right now. Right now I'm at 14 minutes. So uh, yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes for the last bits of this episode. Okay, I am back, and I just watched the rest of the, the rest of this episode. I also watched the ending song, a new ending song, a new ending song too. 
And man, that ending song, I just need to talk about that first. The ending song is amazing. Like, that is, like, literally as good as the last one. Like, there's not even, like, there's not even, like, a drop in quality. It's, really, like, the, it's like the exact same art style that they have for the the way that it was painted and something, the way that it was made, in, like, in the last one. They did it with this one, and it's still good. Like, like this song is still good as the last one. The events that happen in it is still cool. Like, man, I just love, like, as much as I love the first opening, and I also love the new second opening, like, they're, like, on par. They're, like, so good. And, like, the new ending songs are, like, on par, too. Like, they're so good. Like, man, there's so much effort put into this series. I just love it. Right after that thing, Nafumi rejected Ren's offer and then decided to protect the to protect Mountie Sun. And after that, they decided to, like, have a plot to run away. So then Philo turned into her bird form. They jumped on her. And then th I really like this move, how Nafumi was, like, like, like using, like, strategy and, like, 4D chess to, like, figure out a way to, like, leave. And he saw that there was, like, a path off to the side, but it was, like, really far down. So then he... So then he ran, jumped onto his air shield, jumped off a giant rock, and then used Philo to glide over to it. And then they glided over to it. But then apparently, uh, the spear hero had a, had an enchantment like chain to put on to Philo to turn her from her bird form into her human form. So then she turned into her human form. She fell back onto like the same plane as all the on all the all the heroes, mind son, and all the knights. And then. So then, so then the spear hero ended up capturing Philo while the rest of them fell down and then like had like like hurt themselves and then fell onto the path that they wanted. The spear hero was just hugging Philo and making her making it so that way she couldn't move. And then the rest of them, like Mindset and all the knights and the, apparently also those like people that that like forged the forged the footage were also there and they were like shooting arrows at him and stuff like that. And then like uh and after that, Raftalia left to go and like fight off Mindset. Like in her like uh, illusion mode, like turning invisible, and then Melty so Sun shot like her water blast at her, so I think she has water powers, and then like hit the spirit hero away from Philo, and then after that, Mind Sun just went crazy. Like like the spirit hero didn't notice it, but man, you can like I said this before, the sword hero he's smart. Like you can just tell he's smart, and the bow hero is like he's like an he's like a like an in between. Like he's like sort of like the spirit hero, but he's at the same time he's, sort of, he's the sword hero. So then he like sees that Mind Sun just starts shooting fireball after fireball, fireball not at Nafumi, but at Melty Sun just right at her face. And Nafumi has to like move his shield to like block her every single time. And then like you see how the bow hero and sword hero are just like, Mind Sun, what are you doing? Mind Sun, what are you doing? You're like, are you actually trying to kill her? And then she's just like, she's brainwashed. We can't save her. Even if we save her, we have to kill her. We have to kill, kill, kill. And then the, you can just tell that they just didn't, they like stopped fighting. They were just standing there bewildered. Like, man, like they have no conscience right there. Like they're, they're just like racking their, in their brains, just being like, what's going on? Like, who can we trust and stuff like that? So then after that, uh, Nafumi has to use his rage shield. So then all of the knights start shooting arrows at him. And then he uses his rage shield. He is he like, like man, his rage shield looked like it boosted up. It looked like it got bigger. It turned into a giant flame wall. And he was like absorbing all the arrows. Like you'd think that like that it would be able to like hit him somewhere. But I guess the flames are also below his uh below his legs off to his right. I guess they, they are flames. So they are like not in one spot. They like go outwards a little bit. So then he's like protecting... Uh, Melty Sun from behind him, and then then he ends up destroying the walkway to get to him. Like he ends up like backing up and destroying it. And then this part, I actually like this part. So then Raftalia like comes out of her illusion with her with her mana shield, her energy sword, and then shoots it right into. She activates it right into Mind Sun's back, just stabbing right through her chest. And I saw that I was like, dude. That didn't kill her. Like, what What type of... Sh what, what, this is some, like, low-level mana shield right there. Like, like, it's not hard enough to stab someone, but you're able to go through them. Like, like it ends up hurting her, and then they end up escaping. And then after that, uh, Ren ends up asking why Nafumi's leaving, and then Nafumi ends up throwing his, like, three-church, like, his, like, church thing in his hand, throws it over to Ren, and then tells Ren, you can figure this out. I know you can. Ren is just like, what do you mean? And then he looks over at it. I guess, like, Ren is the most reasonable person out of all of them, because he's, like, the most respectful and stuff like that, especially towards Nafumi. Like, throughout, like, every single episode up until now, like, you've seen him, like, be a little bit more, like, lenient towards Nafumi and the bow hero and spear hero were just not like that whatsoever. So I guess like he is like he is like right to put faith into the sword hero. So then they end up leaving. Well, I forgot to mention this before that Raftalia, as they were traveling, Raftalia was able to sense one of one of like the espionage spies behind, but she couldn't sense it for sure. And then like now she ends up sensing it, and then like like she ended up coming out of nowhere. Like man, her like dare I say, 
was so friggin' annoying. Like, like in my head, like I was just like, if she just, if she's gonna keep on going, she's gonna keep on talking like that. I'm gonna like rip my brain out. Cause dare I say, dare I say, dare. she just kept on singing. Like after every sentence, like it reminds me of some of like the the hamster from Overlord. Like, like at least he's at least in like I think the second season. No, he kept on talking. At least he isn't like a prime target, just like this spy. Like man, also also was she saying that she was the person that was talking to now Fumi before? Like is she the same girl? Cause she had brown hair and she has black hair now. Or like, like, can they change appearances now, or is that a different person? Like, he ended up telling Nafumi that, that the queen wanted to meet him when and Melty Sun or Nafumi left it, like, dropped his bag off the cliff. Apparently, the spy saved the package and then gave it back to him before she left. And then Nafumi's just like, is just like, what would the queen even give me? Like, is there a point to even meeting her? And then he ended up looking over at his map, and then apparently, the place that Nafumi needs to go to meet the queen is on the other side of the continent from Sylvet. Like, he nearly needs to go the opposite direction. But of course, he's probably still going to go to Sylvet, and then after that, he'll probably go over to where the queen is, or maybe like he'll get halfway there. I I forgot how events work, but other than that, the episode ended with a very cute moment with Melty Sun ended up telling Nafumi to stop uh, calling her second princess because he only calls her second princess or crown princess. So then, so then he ended up like like uh, just t- telling him, but getting very like pouty and asking him to say her name, and then. And then Nafumi said that he would only say her name if she said his name instead of calling him Shield Heroes. And they ended up calling each other names. And then, and then she, she, Melty Sun wanted Nafumi to say it one more time, since so she ended up saying it. And then Raftalia ended up pouting because I guess like she remembers like how she used to be a kid before she evolved. So then she ended up like being left out. I guess Phila wasn't left out because she's just like she ends up getting cute moments whenever she wants to. Oh yeah, and then I, I forgot to mention how like Nafumi was able to like get like the the chain off of philo to make her turn back into a board and he was just able to do it easily like he just was just appraising it with his shield powers and just broke it off like that's just crazy how he was able to just break that off easily and the episode ended with uh with rough talia looking off into the distance i'm pretty sure so uh yeah this episode was pretty good i enjoyed the opening and ending songs the episode the stuff that happened in the, the beginning middle and ending were pretty awesome i can't wait until next week to see what happens and uh yeah it's, it was just was a pretty insane and pretty good episode I loved it so much. So, yeah. If you enjoyed this review, my thoughts and my opinions on this episode, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy it at all, leave a dislike. And, yeah, I'll see you guys next week in the next review. And, uh, yeah, bye.